This is a uh, 70 centimeter band um, Yagi antenna, been previously constructed uh, with a uh, folded dipole as a driven element. Um, I've decided that uh, the folded dipole, while in a lot of ways superior, uh, is actually quite difficult to construct and I wanted a uh, faster um, method of construction, therefore simpler. Uh, so uh, the one I've looked at is a um, J-driven element or a J-dipole driven element or sometimes referred to as a half-folded dipole. Uh, so this is uh, popularized by uh, Kent Britton, W5VJB. Um, and uh, the construction's pretty straightforward. Most of the examples that I've seen by uh, Kent have been on a wooden boom, so I've adapted this to uh, my version where it's an all aluminium construction. And um, the uh, construction is on a uh, L bracket, which has got the um, uh, coax connection angled up slightly so that the uh, coax is fed away from any of the connection points on the boom so there's no uh, in interference with that we're freely able to uh, adjust the uh, reflector and director so the uh, j driven element can be um, positioned so that the coax feeds towards the center of the antenna or it can be fed off the end so uh, the uh, advantages of the J-driven element over the folded dipole are it's consistent with the Yagi design philosophy of ease of construction, um, experimental adjustments. Um, there is uh, some ability to tune the J-driven element in that you can shorten the element. You can incrementally cut it in to uh, try and bring the thing into resonance. Uh, this is not something that's easily done or can be done at all with the uh, folded dipole. And when completed, uh, also consistent with the um, Yagi design philosophy is that everything gets tightened up and we have an antenna that we can put up the tower. It's robust. Uh, it will be good in all weather and uh, should last for years without much maintenance. So uh, we've constructed this and um, looks pretty good and uh, we're, we're now going to test it to uh, make sure that it performs, that it matches easily and that uh, it doesn't um, in any way uh, reduce the gain of the uh, Yagi. Now, there's no reason why I think it would but I will test this. And so uh, now we're going to move on to um, uh, testing the uh, antenna with the uh, J-driven element. I'm now connecting the uh, Nano VNA to the uh, Yagi with the um, J-driven element or half uh, folded dipole. Uh, the uh, Nano VNA has been calibrated up to the point of attachment so we are looking at the uh, antenna impedance proper. Uh, so uh, this is the display. We're just going to uh, zoom in a little bit. Um, four, three, five megahertz. So we've got a reasonably uh, wide match. Now just uh, bring the display in a bit tighter. So the scale is now um, three to one SWR. Um, so we really want to be, I think, below 2.5, which is uh, giving us a bandwidth. Let's see if we can grab it. 
2.5 being about there. So it's 427 megahertz. To 431, so it's not exactly where we want it. I want it a little bit uh, further up in frequency. So we can make some adjustments uh, with the Yagi. We can shift uh, the uh, reflector around and uh, also the first driven element. And we should be able to do that without compromising the uh, gain. Uh, we will test all this. Uh, but initially I'm just going to move the uh, reflector in a bit closer so if we can load this down and uh, uh, bring the match up in frequency. That's about a centimetre forward, we'll move it a bit further. All right, by moving the reflector forward, we've uh, essentially brought the uh, SWR match. Uh, so we'll just come down to about 2.5 to 1. So it's now giving us a frequency range from uh, approximately 432 megahertz. Pretty good place to start. I'm going to sweep all the way across here. Still quite respectable SWR and at approximately 2.5 to 1 uh, we're now up at 439 megahertz. So from 439 about 432 megahertz so that's a reasonably good bandwidth um, we've also demonstrated we've got a bit of control over where we want this to land uh, matching wise and uh, so that's um, pretty successful so the next thing to do now is to um, make sure that we've still got sufficient gain on the uh, Yagi I'm confident that we will have but I need to verify this uh, so that's the uh, SWR uh, matching completed and I'm quite happy with the outcome of that and the control that we've got. Okay we've got the uh, source dipole and the reference dipole set up to uh, set the baseline. Uh, we're in the uh, uh, log mag display. Set the frequency range to start at 435 megahertz stop 436 megahertz calibrate the display reset calibrate through, done, save. That's now 0 dB, so that's our baseline. The display scale 2 Reference to uh, 
and we'll now swap the uh, reference dipole out for the uh, Yagi. With the uh, Yagi antenna now in position after replacing the uh, reference uh, antenna with the Yagi, we're now showing about 7.7 uh, dBi, close to 8. It's a little bit below the uh, original Yagi with the folded dipole, but we're uh, less than a dB difference. So uh, given it's a backyard measurement, it's probably fairly close. Um, we have had to um, readjust the position of the uh, reflector and first director to uh, achieve this figure. Um, so what we're looking at is the yellow trace indicating the SWR value, which is 1.6 to 1, fairly good. And the... Um, return gain uh, in blue, uh, indicating up here at 7.7 um, dB as compared to a dipole of the same frequency. So that wraps up the uh, field tests for this antenna. With construction complete and the um, testing carried out for uh, SWR to determine the matching and uh, also the uh, antenna's uh, gain performance, uh, the conclusion is that the um, J-driven element is a much simpler element to construct than the uh, folded dipole. Um, it has uh, one minor drawback that I can see, that is that the bandwidth appears to be um, somewhat reduced. That said, it's about 8 megahertz of uh, usable bandwidth uh, with a SWR of 2.5 to 1 or better. Uh, we've also established that by adjusting the uh, reflector spacing between the driven element and also the uh, first director that we can um, Uh, land that 8 megahertz of uh, bandwidth anywhere we like within the uh, 70 centimeter band so it is something we can live with and work around uh, the other measurement we did was uh, antenna gain in this area we noticed that there appeared to be a slight uh, degrading of the antenna gain uh, that said it was less than 1 dB and given that this is a uh, backyard method of uh, determining and measuring the uh, gain. Uh, this could easily fall within the margin of error. Uh, so uh, given that it hasn't degraded that much and it's still within a predictable range uh, for this antenna, um, I don't think this is a showstopper um, and that the uh, J-driven element is uh, a uh, worthwhile um, solution to uh, consistency with the Yagi design philosophy for uh, ease of construction and um, experimental adjustment. Um, and at the end of the day, it's a, a robust um, antenna that can be put up the mast with uh, little maintenance for uh, possibly many years. So, uh, yeah, that's the uh, end of the video. Uh, once again, thank you for watching and uh, look forward to uh, see any comments uh, below.